Hello and welcome back to Sharks Happen. Uh, in today's show we are going to go over a couple of fishermen that are attacked, a spear fisherman that's attacked, and we'll finish out the show with what I'm going to put in anyway as a what were you thinking. Hope you stick around, it's going to be a great show. Okay, we're going to start out real quick. We're going to go over to Aba, which is in Papua New Guinea, and the date on this attack is November of 1960. An unknown male, he was from Abu Island, uh, he was fishing on a reef. So standing on a reef sounds like, and he's fishing. Shark came up and bit him, and he ends up passing away from his uh, wounds. He ends up with uh, genital mutilation and his legs were pretty badly mutilated and he ended up passing away from blood loss. Uh, doesn't say if he made it to the beach alive and then passed away when he got in. Uh, no details other than that. That's the only thing I can find on Go Shark and I don't even know if I saw this on Shark Attack Survivors or not. So uh, that's the attack on the unknown male from Abu Island who was fishing on the reef. An attack, uh, not an attempt to predate, and by what we know from what they've said and then we just don't know what type of shark could be any kind of shark and he's fishing on a reef could well be a reef shark that got a hold of him and uh, you know a shark that normally doesn't kill ended up getting lucky and sad way to say that but for the shark um, one of those rare cases where one that doesn't normally end up in a fatality does. And if you're attacked by a shark and you're alone, it really doesn't matter what size shark. You had that four foot shark that those gentlemen were on the raft and they were floating around in the water after I think a ship went down. Um, I don't know if it was a plane or a boat that went down, but the four guys were on the raft. I believe it was four that were on the raft. Four foot shark jumped in there, bit the guy in the leg. Um, I'm sure they got rid of the shark, but that guy ended up passing away from just a bite to the leg from a four foot shark because they were out there floating around so long. So if you can't get the help, you're not going to get, you know, you're probably not going to survive a survivable attack. Um, it's probably why over there at the shark attack capital of the world, which is New Smyrna Beach where most people are bitten, that it's always pretty crowded beaches and the water when they're in there and people are going to get them out of the water relatively fast and these sharks that are biting those people over there usually I mean not always there's bulls and tigers and great whites in the water uh, a foot or the flash of a palm of a hand and you know you're tanned and it's going to be a contrast like a flash of a fish and they'll bite it accidentally those are not mistaken ID so that's our attack on the un known male and we'll move on. Okay, now we're going to head over to Playa Tamarindo, that is in Costa Rica. The date on this attack is January 3rd of 2003. Ross Menking, he was out doing some surfing is all that we know. There's no details on the bite, it's on the attack itself. Um, by, the, by the bite mark, it looks like shark just came up, grabbed him by the calf. Grabbed him by the calf, bit him once, didn't shake and went its way. Um, so he was doing something on his board, maybe sitting waiting for a wave, maybe laying on the board. Either way, the shark grabbed onto his leg, didn't shake, and went on its way. They do have a photograph of the leg, and it looks like a decent sized shark. Uh, they said it's about a seven foot shark. It looks like a six, seven foot bull shark got a hold of him, and that's what they reported as the shark. Uh, species being, but the odd thing is, is it's 2003 attack. I can't find anything on it other than a ghost shark. Um, ghost shark, and there's another one, couple of ones that list shark attacks in Costa Rica, which is odd because you'd expect that from older attacks like 50s and before in out of the way areas for that to be the case but 2003 and we don't have much information and like I said this is going to be one of those typical two second attacks bites and gone and that's probably what happens on most attacks off of the beaches at New Smyrna is just a bite maybe a quick shake and then the shark goes on its way I don't normally go over any of those 
black tip spinners that grab onto the people and try to take them away. But like I said, there are bulls and tigers and gray whites that go through that area. And uh, it's not exclusively gonna be those mistaken identity, not mistaken identity, but accidental bites from sharks that aren't out to get you. Could be a shark that is out to get you like a bull, maybe a tiger that decides it's hungry. So that's the attack on Ross Men King. Not a lot of information, but from the picture, an attack, not an attempt to predate. We're gonna put this down as a seven foot bull shark. Okay, now we're gonna head over to Galapagos Island, which is in Ecuador. The date is July 30th of 1954. Carl Dibble, he is 34 years old. He is out doing some tuna fishing. Now he's on a boat and it's got, it says that he's fishing from a platform. I would think that platform is probably in the back where you know, they have platforms to get in and off of a boat and you can stand on them. So I would think it's in the back of the boat. So he's on a platform, he is fishing for tuna. Now when you're fishing for tuna, at least down in the Keys, there are sharks after these tuna. Uh, it's getting harder and harder to reel tuna in. There's so many sharks at the hump, at least, where we went fishing off of Isla Morada there. Uh, it's obviously increasing the amount of sharks that are under there waiting for you to hook up a tuna so that they can catch them easily. Uh, they can't get them very easily when they're not caught, but once you catch them, uh, they can't go anywhere and the shark will get them if you can't get them in fast enough. So that happens a lot. So. The tuna fishermen in his area, they say that there's sharks always around the boats when you're doing the tuna fishing there. He's on the platform and he's fishing and the boat's rolling with the waves. And the rolling of the boat has his feet, which are his right foot sounds like it's kind of hanging off the platform a little bit, that he's standing at the front of the, at the edge of the platform. And the platform goes under the water from the rolling of the boat. And as that happens, a shark comes up and bites him in the foot. So he gets in and gets it taken care of, but he had four triangular holes in the top of his right foot from having his foot sticking over the top. And he probably, like I said, he probably gets away with this all the time. Um, not a what were you thinking, like the gentleman that uh, had already been bitten by a shark before and he was chumming him. No, he had had a stroke, I believe it was before. So he couldn't move real fast and he had his legs in the, in the water as he's chumming great whites and one of them came up and bit him in the leg. Well, he, can't, he couldn't even move his leg. This is a case where, you know, just an odd situation. It's kind of like that guy that was, we went over maybe a few full episodes ago, was unhooking probably a sandbar shark, I think it was, and a larger one came over and bit him in the hand when he was unhooking the other shark. Just a freak situation. Um, so that's, almost like a shark jumping into your boat type of thing, but not quite as much. Uh, you don't want to be standing on platforms when you're fishing for tuna because those sharks are in the area um, and they're waiting for you to hook those tuna and then they'll follow those tuna into the boat as you're reeling them in as they're trying to get them. So uh, that's the attack on Carl Dibble. An attack, not an attempt to predate on his foot as he was fishing. And I'm not going to call this provoked, so we just don't know what type of shark. Uh, could be anything. Potluck there. <laughs> All sharks like a free meal, especially a good tuna meal. So that's Carl Dibble. We will move on. Okay, we're going to head over to Wrightsville Beach, and that is in North Carolina. And the date is October 2nd of 2000. Mark Taylor, he is 24 years old. He was out doing some surfing, and at the time, it's about 4.30 in the afternoon, and it doesn't sound like anybody's out surfing with him. He might be out there by himself. He's paddling at the time, about 100 yards from shore, doesn't say how deep the water is, 4.30 and a shark comes up. He says the head came clearly out of the water over his board and grabbed him by the arm near the elbow and shook him twice, pulling him off the board. He remounted his board and was able to paddle his way into the shallows where some girls helped him up onto the beach. And it's reported he needed, I believe, 150 stitches for that. Um, the bite, they say, was 10 inches wide, so it's a pretty wide bite, pretty big shark. He had claimed that the, the head of the shark was a foot, uh, some say a foot and a half, uh, but if it's a foot wide head, it's not a pointy head, so that's not going to be your spinner or your, your black tip. That's got to be a bull, a tiger, somebody that has a wide mouth, and I, I believe uh, when they 
concluded on this one. They said that they think it was a bull shark that got a hold of his arm. I would think so, somewhere around six to eight feet with a 10 inch wide bite. Um, but that wide head, instead of saying pointy head, like a, like a black tip would have, and a spinner both have more of a pointy head than the broad head that the tiger and the bull have. And some of the bull shark's cousins, like the, uh, the sandbar, has a wider front to it. And if it's a foot, it's a decent sized shark. Uh, big enough to go into our stats. And he goes down some attack, uh, not an attempt to predate. We don't know what kind of shark. And like I said, it shook him twice. So that must have been a pretty uh, vicious tear uh, onto his arm where the shark grabbed him and pulled him off of the board. Luckily, it lost interest in him right away and swam away. Um, like a lot of them do with, with these surfboard attacks. Um, so like I said, that's how it's going to go down for Mark Taylor. He ends up surviving, uh, had to go get stitched up. But probably best case scenario, if you run into a large bull shark like that, 100 yards from shore, and you're pretty much on your own, which it sounds like in the situation, and we will move on. Okay, now we're gonna head over to Rispent, and that is in Western Cape Province, South Africa. The date, June 23rd of 2016. Rene Nell, he is 43 years old, and he is out doing some spear fishing. He's obviously with some friends, and they don't have details on this. I haven't been able to find where he actually talks about the attack. He ended up with a bite to his, bad bite to his calf and to his thigh and it included a 10 centimeter avulsion involved there and it's just a, ooh, it's a brutal attack. They don't mention what ended up happening. He did end up with defensive wounds too. I believe his right hand trying to fight that shark off. Uh, they didn't say what size the shark was, uh, obviously pretty large and uh, the bites are just horrific. It looks that way anyway, as you can go ahead and you can, I think you can go on YouTube or you can Google either way, or I use DuckDuckGo, I don't use Google. Uh, but you can go ahead and put in Rene Nell, R-E-N-E-N-E-L, and there's video of them pulling him up onto the beach and getting him off to help, and in which case you can see, you don't see it graphically you see the blood and you see the lengths of these cuts but the damage the bad damage is probably to the other side of the leg I would think than what you can see in there uh, but very very bad damage done there I haven't heard of arteries or or tendons but I wouldn't be shocked that something ended up happening there his friends when they got him onto the boat they used their rubber from their spear guns to be able to staunch the bleeding on his legs. And I'm not sure about how bad the hand was and you know, with, with that situation, but the legs definitely needed to be uh, dealt with, the, the left leg that the shark got a hold of. So we'll put this down as an attack. Not an attempt to predate a great white shark, we just don't know how large it was. Okay, now we're going to finish off our unprovoked attacks. We are going to head over off of Miao Island, which is in Queensland, Australia. The date is January 2nd of 2016. Alan Countryman, he is out doing some spearfishing. Uh, they don't say how far from shore he is at, but he's off of Miao Island and he's in about 10 feet deep water, three meters deep water. It's about 11.30 and he says that he speared himself a trout. And the trout attracted this mackerel. A bunch of mackerel came <laughs> to try to get us to eat the shark that's chasing them. Or it was after the trout, which I don't think. But the shark was after the mackerel. The mackerel comes by the shark, by the spear fisherman, by Alan Countryman. And the shark comes up. They say this is up to a three meter from his boat. And he swims this 20 yards to get back into the boat. That's the attack on, on this Allen Countryman. Just sounds like a, like a to me, a, a mako shark, the way it wouldn't let go. So that's the attack. An attack, not an attempt to predate, almost an accidental bite. We could call it that. And uh, we just don't know what type of shark. Okay, before we get to the end of the show, I just wanted to bring up uh, my sawfish. <laughs> There's a gentleman on a, on a beach. You guys got to go ahead and Google DuckDuckGo to sawfish attacks dogs. 
on beach, I guess you could put. But there's a gentleman with two or three dogs running around him. They walk up to the to the shoreline, and you can see this. It's probably a good six foot, seven foot sawfish. You can see this water start to be disturbed as something's going up out of the water towards the dogs and the guy that's on the beach. And out comes the saw. <laughs> And the fish is trying to jab something with it, whether the dogs or the guy. It's swinging that saw around, and it's quite a sight to see that a sawfish will come right out the shore, take its saw, put it right on the beach, and try to hit something. So uh, I want to let you guys know about that. So just wanted to go over that real quick, because you don't see a sawfish pop itself out of the water and try to get something on the beach every day. And it's a cool little video, and it's out there. Um, like I said, the Renee Nell, uh, R-E-N-E-N-E-L, uh, that video is out there for those who want to take a look at the uh, injury on him. Like I said, not very graphic. He's still got his wetsuit on. I do believe they cut it off later on, though, in the video. It, it's, it's, it's just a little bit of a lengthy video. Okay, i got to add in a few of these clips that I've been collecting over the time here. They don't really pertain to the show very much. Well, one of them, well, two of them do, but the first one doesn't. Um, just another odd thing I ran into when I was doing some uh, research into the shark attacks. The first one I'll show you here is an, uh, an attack, not an attempt to predate by a human male we just don't know how big he was and going by averages of heights of males i would say more than likely wouldn't fit into our large attack show here even if he was a shark so that's just a human biting a human it was weird to come across it i don't know what what attack i was researching i just clipped it and then the next one here this is the one that uh is interesting it's i believe it was a female i clipped it and I thought it was in my stack of attacks it wasn't it's in clippings from my archives and it's on my computer and I finally ran across it again uh, the woman I believe it's a woman she was on her paddleboard I think it was and was having issues with it so she jumped in the water and swam to shore and when she turned around she looked and saw her paddleboard being mangled by a shark so sharks out there attacking a paddleboard that has nobody on it um, just another case of those where it doesn't care if it has the board or the person or both it's attacking what's there um, and most of the time and almost all the time off of the US coast has nothing to do with feeding and then we have the final one is interesting because it's Arthur Smith and what is the name of this um, I ran across this I don't even know what I was looking at to come across this but um, yesterday's America, I think it is. It says the Matawan shark, a deadly day in 1916. They list Arthur Smith as a victim. Now, anybody who's gone over that thing as much as I have knows that there's three victims in the Matawan River, and it started with little Lester Stillwell, who was 12 years old, I think, taking a break from his factory job, taking a swim, and he gets attacked and disappears. And Stanley Fisher ends up attacked and a large chunk of his thigh taken with it and he ends up passing away from a two to two and a half hour train ride to get to help. And then the last one would be Joseph Dunn, who I assumed was climbing up out of the water kind of on a ladder type thing, the way that I had heard this, I guess imagine the story in my head as it came up. And that's gonna change a little bit to what I saw in here. He was actually picked up by a couple boats now. I don't know whether he was trying to get out of the water, if he's swimming out of the water, or if he was just bitten in the leg. Uh, but they ended up pulling him onto their boat. So he didn't, he was not, it doesn't seem like he was climbing out of the water when he was attacked, which is one of the stories that you hear about that. It sounds like these two boaters picked him up out of the water. So this Arthur Smith comes up and they say that he ended up, um, and I had to look into Arthur Smith, so I checked my archives, and sure enough, I came up with Arthur Smith. And Arthur Smith was on a boat. He and a gentleman named George were on a boat. It sounds like Stanley Fisher was already in the water searching in the deeper parts. And the people were telling him, don't get out of the boat. But him and George both, the reports in the news say that they got out of the boat, and they were searching along the banks in the shallows. And... The report in this is that he got hit, he got whacked, and then the shark went and got Stanley Fisher. Um, I can't see, and it says that he needed 10 or 12 stitches, something very small, you would think, with the shark attack. Now, could a, I don't think, 
um, because he does say he got brushed by it. So he's in the water, he's searching in the newspaper archives. When he's being interviewed, he says, yes, it brushed by me. And seconds later, that's when it grabbed Stanley Fisher. So it sounds like it bypassed Arthur Smith and went to Stanley Fisher. Arthur Smith got brushed against. I don't know about any stitches or anything. This is the only time I've ever seen his name as far as being a victim in the situation. And I have seen other things that said other people were in the water searching and that some even thought it was by them. So maybe I did see Arthur Smith's story before, but he, from all I can see, is not a victim. It's still just the three victims. Now, Joseph Dunn, like I said, that one is more, we don't know how far from shore, if he was trying to get out of the water or what, but he didn't, he wasn't, it doesn't sound like near getting out of the water and was grabbed. It sounds like he was bitten and pulled up out of the water by two men in a boat, at least by what I see in my archives. So I wanted to go through that. We'll continue with the rest of the show. We'll get to the end of the show with what were you thinking? Uh, Christopher Nyman, uh, does it say his name? He's 23 years old. He's at Magdalena Bay, which is over in, where is this, Mexico. And this is November 11th of 2019. Now, he is actually going out with another, their, their cameraman, and he wants to go out and he wants a picture of, of sailfish and marlin. So, he gets with an expert in taking this kind of videos, and he goes out on November 11th, and he's going out with this other guy. And the way they do this, and this is where this, what were you thinking, comes in, because <laughs> it's just... I would never do something like this. But anyway, you have to get the great pictures somehow. They go, and the way they get the photos of the sailfish and the marlins is they go to the bait ball that they're chasing. So there's a bait ball in the water that these marlins, the sailfish, they go through and they stab them and then they collect what they've stabbed and everything. So what they do is they enter the water and they go to the bait ball so they're swimming, he's swimming towards the bait ball when he's bitten by a shark that was obviously after either the marlin or the bait ball. I mean, a bait ball, you could have anything by that bait ball. I'm not going swimming towards a bait ball. So Christopher Nyman, what were you thinking swimming towards a bait ball? I'm sure you were thinking great pictures, but instead you got the bonus plan. You got the great, well, not a great white, but the shark that was running through that thing probably ended up with you. So he ends up bitten by a shark and he has to go up and get help. Not, not a major attack. His uh, right forearm was bitten. It happened around noon. And like I said, he was swimming towards the bait ball as he was bitten. Don't tell him whether the shark was on its way to the bait ball or went through the bait ball and got him. We don't know. We just know that he was bitten in his right forearm. And uh, the thing about it is, is uh, you're going to go into a bait ball. What I would worry about most around any bait ball is one of those giant mouths coming up. <laughs> and you end up in it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just one of those giant whales comes up and sucks up all those fish and you end up swallowed like Ahab. That's what I don't want to happen there. I would never swim towards a bait ball for a million different reasons. And that shark to bid him is just one of them. So that's our attack on Mr. Christopher Nyman. And that's our what were you thinking. And that's our show for today. If you go into that water, you are much more afraid of this guy than he is of you. <laughs>